Boom! Hey everybody, how you doing? Last Outrider back. You like the new hat? I decided, really? Gray pinstripes before September? How gauche! The fashionistas will kill me. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> Next in our video series is going to be Agrippina. This is going to be the forge world for the Cadian system. They call it the Orb of a Million Scars. Agrippina exists upon the threshold of the Eye of Terror. Were it not for the stout defenses of the Cadian system, it would have fallen to the powers of chaos more than once. The warp smiths of the traitor legions, long denied the technological wonders unearthed since the great Horus heresy, have led raids beyond counting upon Agrippina, including several full-scale invasions. Its once golden surface bears the wounds of war with obliterator cults, demon engines, and even the grotesque traitor legions. Traitor Titans, sorry. There are those who believe that Agrippina has mounted its own raids into the depths of the eye, though no official records exist of such events. The Aegis of Cadia is not a one-way shield, of course. Agrippina not only provides arms and armor enough to equip the entire Cadian system, but has also committed one of the largest Skitari legions in the galaxy to the war effort. Rumor has it that the recent upswell of numbers in Agrippina's Skitari and battle servitors is directly connected to a large-scale evacuation from the prison planet of St. Josemain. Officially, the planet's subsequent exterminatus expunged every trace of its heresy once and for all. However, there are those who believe Agrippina's famed Iron Strider Cavalier hordes boast many convicts and rebels each given one final chance to serve the Omnissiah with his glorious death. <laughs> so there you go. What did we learn from that? It means they just opened the door for Chaos Mechanicus. Yeah, basically, they marched Skatari legions into the Eye of Terror. Wow. Who knows what that did? Get to customizing, people. Because now you've just got cause for Chaos Skatari. Um, let's see. Oh, then they got a little snippet here. <clears throat> this is uh, ba -ba -bum, a little steel and oh, steel in mind and body. To the servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus, flesh is merely an inconvenience. They consider it weak and frail in comparison to the mighty pistons, gears, and chains of machinery. It must be sustained artificially beyond a certain point, and if one is to make best use of it, much of it needs replacing by newly grown parts or manufactured limbs organs, and systems. Devotees have their brains surgically altered to incorporate memo chips, engrams, or electrographs, which allow them to store and access an incredible amount of information. They are often fitted with a variety of neurosystems and plugs, which allow them to jack in to the network of a terminal or machine becoming a part of its operating or control system. The most aged of the Adeptus Mechanicus are many, many centuries old. K 
kept alive by horrifically produced rejuvenate elixirs, which nourish the few parts of mortal flesh left on their bodies. Although the wealth of knowledge and experience crammed into their brains often divorces, the, divorces, them, divorces them entirely from the realities of life. Overseers often show a degree of cold detachment, seeing other people as nothing more than a set of complex biochemical and bioelectrical processes. In time, they see everything, including themselves, in this way, so that injuries, diseases, and illnesses are seen as malfunctions and healing simply as a crude self-repair system. They don't give a quote on who that's from or where it comes from, but apparently that was some uh, critique or overview of what it's like to be an Adeptus Mechanicus. Usually they have a name at the end quoting who's talking, but not this time. I guess it's the wisdom of the universe speaking to us. <laughs> but that tells you another thing. Adeptus Mechanicus, Archmagoses, Fabricator Generals, they could be uh, 5,000, possibly even 10,000 years old. They can essentially just keep those little tiny fleshy bits uh, still still going, like the Emperor guy kind of on the, on the Golden Throne. That's something to think about. Anyways, they no longer think like humans, so now they're back to just seeing the whole world as a bunch of programs and functions and, as they said, bioelectrical and biomechanical functions. No longer people interesting stuff. Next time, we're going to be talking about ooh, Stygius 8, the ever-staring Cyclops. Another famous forge weld for you. Until then, bye! Mm.